Hey, Squid listeners, it's every other Sunday again, and you're listening to Sustainability Now, a bi-weekly K-Squid radio show focused on environment, sustainability, and social justice in the Monterey Bay region, California, and the world. I'm your host, Ronnie Lipschitz. Students eat, but what do they eat, and where does that food come from? Both the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the California Department of Food and Agriculture are trying to help small farms sell more of their organic produce to public schools, shortening the supply chain between farms and consumers, and encouraging students to eat more salads and other healthy foods. Today, I have a full house at the studio. My guests are Mireya Gomez-Contreras and Alma Leonor Sanchez from Esperanza Community Farms in Watsonville, and Pajaro Valley High School students Mark Mendoza Luengas and Julio Gonzalez. We're going to talk about Esperanza's Farm to Cafeteria program and their efforts to help Latina operators of small farms on the Central Coast earn more revenue for their crops by selling directly to customers. I want to welcome all of you to Sustainability Now. Thank you so much for having us, Ronnie. Say something, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Okay. All right. Um, let's start by uh, tell, you know, telling our audience something about Esperanza Community Farm, how it got started, how it operates, who does it serve, and who does the work on the farm. Sure. I can start. Um, I'm Mireya, and I'm co-leader at Esperanza Community Farms, um, along with our farmer, Guillermo Lazaro, who co-leads as well as the farmer, and he's actually the one that does the bulk of the work on the farm. Um, Esperanza was started in 2017 by Roberto, Candy, and Ana. Actually, Ana's, I know she's listening to us right now, cheering us on, especially these wonderful youth that have uh, taken a step into the salads at their high school. Esperanza has three programs, uh, starting with the CSA, the Community Supported Agriculture Program. That program basically delivers um, farm-to-door baskets of fresh organic local produce from our farm to the doorstep of 175 families in the Pajaro Valley. The second program is the Farm to Cafeteria program, which we'll be focusing on today. And the third one is the Small Farmers of Color Cooperative that we helped form, which is in their final stages of transition to becoming their own independent ag co-op in the, on the Central Coast. So all of those programs work interdependently, and we'll talk a little bit about how that happens. And um, we're really, I mean, I started as a CSA member myself in 2017, and I'm it's really, it's really been a blessing and a transformative experience for me to be on the farm for so many reasons, but keep it at that for now. And Alma, what's your role at the farm? Yeah, so um, I've been working with Esperanza Community Farms for about two years. Um, my role is Farm to Cafeteria Project Manager, and I basically work um, to help students connect to our orga organic farm, um, get to learn more about other organic farms in the area, um, and also support their um, goals to get organic produce onto their campuses. Um, and so we have two internships that involve students um, in those types of leadership roles um, that help them, that allow them to experience the farm and also get you know, get interested and get motivated to bring that healthy and organic produce onto their schools. Um, every time there's um, students who want to learn more on campus or are just interested about where these salads come from, I'm typically the one engaging on campuses um, and communicating with staff, which is um, a really big, important piece to kind of the overall project. Okay. And, um, uh, Mark and Julio, why don't you tell us something about yourselves? Each well, uh, I, I really like film. I've been working with a program called Youth Cinema Project that goes to my school. So I've been doing that since elementary. I do a lot of act, acting and uh, drama. And now this internship with Esperanza Farms. Are you filming as part of the 
the internship? Uh, no, internships? but um, we're going to make a student documentary kind of uh, when for the end of the internship mm -hmm. showing what we did. And I think I might make a short film out of that. Mm -hmm. And Mark? Um, I uh, like to be an activist for youth a lot. So when I heard about uh, this internship, I really wanted to be in it because uh, I like to activate for students. I also do um, like pro different projects, theater, I do art, I do Taekwondo, and that's like I'm more of a creative side, and I try. I want to bring uh, creativeness to Farms Cafeteria and Esperanza Community Farms. Well, why don't we start by talking about the um, the background of the Farm to School program? Okay, so both USDA and and the state of California have gotten very interested in supporting the operators of small farms. And this is one of the main motivations, right, for, for farm to school. Um, and to, to provide uh, channels for, for more direct sales. So um, what, what can you tell us about, you know, broadly about the, the programs? Yeah, so Farm to Cafeteria specifically started off um, simply with just high school students um, trying to figure out a way for more of the food that they eat on campus to be organic and to be locally sourced. Um, they had a big interest um, on getting students to recognize where their food is coming from and who's growing it. Um, and so that's when Esperanza Community Farms began to partner with students and um, support their ideas. Um, and that's where Farm to Cafeteria came from. Um, students had been walking to Esperanza Community Farms with teachers as like field trips for a while and we realized that there's a point where um, you know students are basically saying very clearly what they would like on campus and the type of food that they deserve um, and so we decided to kind of move forward with that and see um, the possibilities of this and so um, we began with a pilot in summer of 2022, um, and that pilot, we made 50 salads for students um, two times a week during summer school mm -hmm. um, to see kind of what types of vegetables they would like, um, how often and how many salads were students actually likely to eat. Um, and so we had two youth leaders um, really design that project um, so that, you know, other high schoolers can engage with it in the ways that like they knew their peers would be interested in engaging in in that project so um yeah those two youth leaders were jesus and carla who are now in college um but yeah they really took the lead on that and kind of created a base a baseline for farm to cafeteria in the way that it's so student-led um and now each year we're in our third year of of that program and each year we welcome new interns um to kind of shape the the internship and the farm to cafeteria project so that um more students can be engaged and it can keep growing um each year how many schools are you working with by now yeah at the moment we are serving salads at four different schools um we serve 150 salads at Pajaro Valley every week and then we serve um, 70 salads at alternative schools in Watsonville um, so that's Diamond Tech, Renaissance and New School. Mm -hmm. um, we've recently started a partnership with um, Everett Alvarez High that um, has kind of just started off as getting students to go on field trips to organic farms in that area that mm -hmm. You know, Salinas is also a community where a lot of schools are surrounded by organic farms, yet a lot of the students don't realize that and they don't kind of, they're not um, completely aware of like the, the stuff that's around them. So being able to expose them to um, organic farmers and, and get to know those farmers is kind of what we're moving towards. Mm -hmm. And. Are there groups? Is there a student group at at the uh, at the high school at Pajaro Valley? I mean, how do you how do you you know interact with the students? Um, maybe I mean, can they can the students tell us? Can, yeah. can Marco Julio say something about so, that? So, in the beginning of the year, um, what my teacher had asked me if I wanted to participate in the farms to cafeteria, and I was like, yeah, sure, because I'm willing to do anything um, for school 
uh, like any extracurricular activities but so I was sent to the cafeteria where we made some salads and I went with some other students that I was unfamiliar with but um, every other day we would go to make the salads and we'd conversate and it kind of built community within more of the students that did, I was did you know at the time where the the produce was coming from uh yes I knew it was coming from the farm right next to my school Esperanza Farms Ah, but it's coming from the, the co-op. We're going to talk about the co-op oh, as well. Right. And and Mark, how about you? Uh, for first... S speak up a little bit. Uh, uh, for like um, pharmacy cafeteria, I heard about it from my ethnic study teacher who uh, runs a cooking class after hmm. school. And she always encouraged us to like make food like on a budget so like everyone could have like food. And uh, she talked to us and she brought Alma to uh, do a presentation while we were in class uh, so that's how I learned and like I, I was very interested in it I was like oh this is really cool like we have a farm here I didn't know that because I'm a freshman and that's like how it started how I learned that mm -hmm. our school has a farm and that there's like a group where we can learn more about like sustainable food mm -hmm. so how does how does the food get from the farms to the to the school you want to before we ask that, answer that question directly, I just wanted to give a little bit of context to what um, Alma and Mark and Julio have said because, yeah, it's, you know, I, I am lucky to spend my time seeing kind of the bigger picture uh, with regard to farm to school in the region. And I'm lucky, too, that I'm connected with, through Guillermo, who is our farmer at Esperanza Community Farms, um, connected to a whole uh, pretty large network of dozens of small farmers of color specifically who many of them are graduating out of ALBA, mm -hmm. which which is an incubator of, of small farmers uh, who were taught to, to farm organically. Um, and because, you know, the first year that Farm to Cafeteria operated, the produce was coming directly from the farm. The second year, as we grew... In, in the number of salads and the number of students interested, we realized, well, we either we're going to grow our farm or we're going to figure we're going to need to figure out how else to get produce. And um, at the same time, our CSA program was growing. So we knew we just needed to move more quickly to get produce in. And in line with our values of interdependence and dignity and joy, we, we realized and Guillermo was actually the one that raised his hand and said, hey, you know, I have my own farm in Salinas also, and I know lots of farmers that are incredible farmers. They're, you know, third, fourth generation farmers. Um, and the thing with the problem they have is they can't, they don't know how to get their produce to market. Or, and if they do, it's mostly to wholesale companies that don't necessarily pay what, they don't pay the market rate basically. And so we immediately uh, thought, Guillermo and I, well, how do we bring together small farmers of color so that we help them, co we connect them directly to the school? Now, that has taken a, several years to do, but we're really lucky this year in particular that the work of the initial students that Alma mentioned and Alma's work has been a really incredible um, effort. And so currently, the produce that is uh, uh, brought into the school at Pajaro Valley Unified School District uh, to make the salads is pulled um, from the 7 Plus Organics Co-op, which is now their official, the official name of this cooperative that we helped form a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty, I mean, that's what we call systems change. You know, Esperanza Community Farms is a nonprofit, um, but we're not uh, just about giving produce to families that's important on a on a on a kind of an immediate level people need to eat they need to eat good food we believe that that everyone needs access and has has a right to right to food on a long-term basis we know that farmers have to be able to you know kind of stand on stand on their own two feet and be able to sustain these relationships with institutions and so over the course of the, the last years, we've supported small farmers to build relationships directly with school districts so that Esperanza d kind of is not a middle, is not a broker or a middle kind of person or organization uh, coordinating that, which we did for the first two years. Alma can talk about the logistical uh, pieces of getting that produce to the farm. Do you want to do that? Because well, we've learned a lot. 
You're listening to Sustainability Now. I'm Ronnie Lipschitz, and in the studio with me today are four people, so it's pretty crowded, and it's getting a bit warm, too, isn't it? Um, Maria Contreras Gonzalez, uh, Gomez, sorry, uh, <laughs> Alma Leonor Sanchez, uh, Julio Gonzalez, right? Hey, yeah, Gonzalez. Yeah, and Mark Mendoza Luengas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're talking about uh, the Farm to Cafeteria program that Esperanza Farms in Watsonville has managed to sort of launch over the last three years. Um, we were just talking about uh, the, the, the suppliers, the farmers who are providing the produce for the program, and I do want to come back to ask some more questions about that. But I also had asked about the logistics of getting the food from the farmers to the schools, and Alma is about to tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, it's actually a really interesting process that when I started working, I was like um, really excited to be able to do this work um, because the produce that we're taking to the schools is organic and fresh and a lot of the times harvested that morning. Um, And so we coordinate with uh, five to six farmers who have their farms located in Watsonville and Salinas and the Pajaro Valley area. Um, And so typically um, around 7 a.m. we drive to Salinas to pick up produce five different um items of produce from the farmers um and a lot of the times it's lettuce um cherry tomatoes strawberries um and then once all the produce is picked up i bring it back to the high school um and then because it's harvested the day of there's really not a whole lot of need for like refrigeration or packaging um, because this a few hours later the students come in they um, you know get their gloves on their hair nets and they're like ready to start making salads which is really cool that um, this is like something that was just harvested from the earth like a few hours ago and now um, the high schoolers get to enjoy it um, and so yeah that delivery happens twice a week um and um we coordinate with the farmers to see what types of vegetables are in season um and also communicate with the students so that if there's like a particular vegetable that they would like to see in their salads we can add that in um or if there's something that you know they don't really like in their salads we can keep that out too (laughs) But, um, yeah. Do you actually drive to each of the farms, or, or are they bringing their produce to, uh, to say, Guillermo's farm? Yeah, so um, before, in the previous years, we were picking up at one central spot at um, Alba, where all the f- farmers mm-hmm. would drop off their produce, and then we'd pick it up. Um, this time around, um, each of the farmers is taking turns being the pickup spot so yeah every morning i'll drive to or not every morning twice a week i'll drive to one of the Mm -hmm. farmers farms and then pick up the produce and and just how how does the produce get to the other schools do you also have to bring it there uh no so um pv high has a pretty big uh kitchen that multiple schools will come to the kitchen to pick up um their lunches or make their lunches in that kitchen so when we make the salads we set aside a few um so that way when those places yeah Mm -hmm. when those cafeteria staff come by pv high they just take the salads that they need Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and um mark and mark and julio so so you've been engaged in making salads yes yeah have you ever done it before uh made a salad made a salad yeah yeah well before that no but um but i've done it a is, few times this is your first time in the, in the kitchen huh? not in the kitchen but making in, salads in, making salads where are the salads made then in the cafeteria oh in the cafeteria but oh, now we moved they moved into the kitchen now you're in the kitchen and mark oh uh, well i haven't made salads i still have to try that out but uh currently the last uh meeting we had at Far- uh Esperanza community farms we were like brainstorming ideas for new salads which is really cool we're like we're like getting feedback from our friends like oh they don't like this well you should do this so we brainstorm a whole bunch of salads and we kept like saying different salads and like um i've tried the salads and they're pretty good i really like them well i want i'm eager to talk about pvusd and their incredible work but did you 
have well, another question? I can ask it later. Well, I can't help it. You know, if any of our listeners today are on Facebook or Instagram and you're following PVUSD Food Nutrition Services, you'll see the, the, the incredible work that they've been doing, the effort that they've taken to bring more locally sourced produce to the school district, district-wide, you know, to all of the schools there. I know that they are, um, in November of last year, they became Eat Real certified, which means that uh, there's not, not only are they sourcing more and more locally and sustainably, but they're increasing their scratch cooking, and um, they're doing it in a way that's really kind of culturally fitting. They have green pozole. I knew they had green pozole. I didn't know that. Green yeah. pozole yeah. at PBI it's, last It's pretty good. Yeah, I saw their post and I thought I wanted it. I want to try that. They have they had some sort of like carne, uh, some sort of bowl recently. Yeah. What was that? It was like a, a chile verde or chile rojo bowl, al pastor bowl actually. Yeah, it was pastor. Yeah. What was that like? Oh, it was pretty good. They give you some pastor with um, a bit of I think it was pico de gallo, mm -hmm. and they give you a few tortillas as well. And is it is that's a new thing? Yeah, yeah that's new. Upgrading. No. It's, it's it's way better than what we've had before. Yeah. yeah. They're also bringing trays. You know, p students serve themselves on trays. Which oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah. And then, um, you know, Jeannie, the, the director of, of food nutrition there, has been uh, an important person. Uh, to uh, she, you know, She's really been leading the effort to transform uh -huh. this work. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, I just want to give her a shout out because I, in terms of leader, leadership, and, you know, social justice is about leadership, strong leadership, committed leadership that stands their ground. And while I have heard lots of school district um, food nutrition directors talk about the incredible amount of rules they have to follow, mm -hmm. right? And it, and it really is, I'm sure, really complex and a tangled mess. That's me talking about it without actually being in it, but I can see it. Um, she has... Jeannie in particular, I just want to give her a shout out. She's done an incredible job to be student friendly. She has opened up doors at PVUSD to allow Farm to Cafeteria to grow. And in particular, uh, this this uh, this season, Farm to, Farm to Cafeteria season, is bringing in produce that's completely paid for by the farm, the food nutrition budget. So we're n so Esperanza is no longer subsidizing the actual produce, which is an important way to be begin to institutionalize programs like this that are student-led, that are in cooperation with farmers, and that are kind of making visible the invisible things that, co that are so important behind any vegetable. How many people touch the vet? We always ask students, how many pe people touch the carrot that's in your salad, right? Where did it come from? Mm -hmm. who, pick, you know, who picked it and what, what are they paying for that and what are they getting back in return? Because they deserve to live a good life too, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I imagine the, the, the produce that the school district and the schools were buying before probably came from a long way away, even though all of this stuff is grown right, right across the street, basically. I was tracking a few years ago when my daughter was at Calabasas Elementary School, just the during COVID, the, pro, the meals that were coming home. And I'm sure, you know, COVID uncovered lots of other problems and possibilities for transforming the food system in the schools. But apples were coming from Nevada at one point. I, and I thought, oh, my goodness, we have lots of yummy apples here. And, of course, it isn't easy to say there's apples here, let's bring apples into the school system. But there's got there, the possibility you know, we see that there's possibility to make it happen. And, and Alma has led the way to make that happen through the Farm to Cafeteria program. Yeah, actually, um, pretty recently, uh, a staff from, I'm not going to say who, but a staff from my school had told me that the packaged carrots that we get are coming from Vegas, which is Nevada, it's like what you were just saying. I had no idea that carrots were being grown in, in Nevada. I thought yeah. they all came. They're those in the winter, they came from Arizona and the Imperial Valley. Well, that's yeah, they're those little baby carrots, yeah, and they come yeah. in a little package. Yeah, Pretty my, nice. my joke is they take the big ones and they grind them down into the little baby <laughs> ones. Uh, <laughs> do you, are, are you learning about the, the, what I think of as the political economy of, of food production? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the sort of relationship of these small farmers mm -hmm. to the distributors and the marketers and, and general. Is that one of the things that you've been learning about? Uh, yeah, we've been... I know that Esperanza Farms is a nonprofit organization, and they help provide food for um, those who cannot afford it. And we've also been learning about how, like, 
um, other farms, the ones that use non-organic farms, that they use pesticides mm -hmm. and they don't uh, crop rotate, which is um, rotating through crops, like I just said. In order um, to yeah, maintain in order soil to, fertility. Yes, right. yeah. so that the nutrients from the soil isn't removed. But they care more about quantity over quality. It's all just about making money. It's not about the nutrition. It's not about making it accessible for those who need it. Well, to be entirely fair, you know, if, if, if you're farming 10 acres, you know, mm -hmm. it's a very, very marginal business. You know, and quantity then becomes important. Have you talked about the, the role of, of distributors in the, in the food chain? Um, so just recently with the interns, we had a conversation about the food supply chain and y'all are welcome to jump in if you'd like. Oh, yeah, go ahead. go ahead. Just like, uh, we were like talking about the food chain, right? And we were saying, we did a food chain in a circle and we went through like every step. It was like, you grow it, you package it, you send it to a warehouse, then they package it again and send it to big stores and that gets to the people who buy it but then we started looking at like how can we like like make it easier mm -hmm. like not use so much packaging not like use like so much transportation and like we were talking about how it's better to just like support like farmers market like organic farms because like how we were talking about how like carrots come from Nevada <laughs> like that's not really necessary because it's so much transportation and so much packaging it's like it's like not like oh uh, it's cheaper but it's also not good for you like you don't think about how how much those carrots went through and like what you're putting in your body and if you go to a farmer's market they're usually all grown lo locally and they always support local farmers which is something that we talked about yeah i, mean, I was looking into some of the statistics a few weeks ago and um and this is from the usda website and it and it applies to large farmers but but farmers get about 15 or 20 cents of the retail dollar if that much right so so these farmers are selling to distributors and you know they're getting and, and the, the produce at the retail level is is pretty expensive you know so so what does this do then what does farm to cafeteria do well farms to this cafeteria and, and for for small farmers um, it creates channels for direct connection mm -hmm. where there there aren't the kind of wholesale companies or middle people, you know, s uh, sellers or that uh, take a ch take a piece of that profit. Ultimately, I think you know what what Julio sa said, and and I it, it is important to be fair. Farming is so expensive. I had no idea. Oh my gosh! I know that in in our area, or at least where we farm, we're we're really lucky to lease. Um, three acres of land, of organic land, farmland, out of the land trust of Santa Cruz County. They are an important player in our creation story. I mean, mm -hmm. really, we we would not be able to have built this, we wouldn't have been, been able to build Esperanza and Farm to Cafeteria to what it is if we had didn't have that as a foundational piece. And we only get to pay a dollar a year uh, per acre because we're a nonprofit. Um, our neighbors who also farm there, uh, Tomatero and Salazar Organic Farms, they pay between 1700 to 2500 per acre. And imagine, 20 acres, 50 acres, 100 acres. So yes, it's pricey to farm. When um, when we, so what, what Esperanza does is we provide technical assistance to farmers so that they get this. This is going to kind of, it, it's a wild thought that I, or it's a wild I'm going to explain something that might sound very wild to many of us uh, listeners today. And that is that small, small farmers of color, are they know how to farm. That's what they do. They know the soil. They know the water. They walk outside and they can tell you whether rain is really coming or not. They can, you know, they can feel soil in their hand. They can close their eyes. They can smell. They know when a fruit is ripe. Gosh, that's like nutrition and sustenance. It's life itself. And they're not, uh, uh, many of them, Many of the, the farmers that I've met are not business people. You need, you need to have the kind of business skills and savviness to navigate, right, in a kind of a, a market that where there, it, where that's based on com competitiveness. We work with small farmers of color, specifically the 7 Plus Organics Co-op, to support them in preparing to call a director 
of a food nutrition program at a high school or, or, or school district and uh, to, to know how to invite them to a meeting, right? To know what to put on the agenda on that meeting, to negotiate, negotiation skills. Uh, uh, and we are also connecting them with, with p- people that can do that work, graphic designers, you know, web designers, uh, photographers that can take photos so that they can actually exist online. Um, writing an email can be incredibly difficult. And many small farmers that we work with don't necessarily uh, uh, navigate the world in English. Right. Spanish kind of is their first language, and that's how they move around. And so it's all of these kind of basic navigation and business skills and tools that we're able to not only um, model, right, but we build their skills so that when Esperanza no longer exists, they can still remain connected to the buyer, this institution. In this, in this case, it's the Parra Valley Unified School District. But LSL High School is on its way. The County Office of Ed in Santa Cruz County is on its way. We just actually uh, finished writing a, um, a collaborative grant with the uh, uh, California Department, what is it, CDFA, of Food and C- Agriculture. Food and Ag, yeah. And they, and you're right, what you said earlier, Ronnie, about the incredible amount of investment that's coming into farm to, farm to cafeteria, farm to school, it's, it's pretty gigantic. And uh, the really cool thing about it is that there's four tracks that are made available so that farmers can apply on, through one track, farmers directly, nonprofits and schools can apply on, a, on, a, on another. Mm-hmm. So it really is like four open doors. Which door do you want to walk through to get <laughs> funding to be able to fund such important work like this that is transformative, that is sustainable, uh, th- that we can sustain a program like this. It's very possible, right, to minimize the packaging, to know who your farmer is, mm-hmm. to be able to make a salad for the first time. Oh, my goodness, all the way until high school. I, it took me four years to, cons- to eat my entire CSA basket. The first two years, I wasted almost half of it, to be quite honest. That's embarrassing to say. But uh, I didn't know how to cook kale. I didn't know what it was. Um, I just didn't eat as, you, as much produce. You might produce. have been better off. But <laughs> <laughs> well, ask my daughter. She yeah. makes a pretty good kale salad. <laughs> yeah. You're listening to Sustainability Now. I'm Ronnie Lipschitz. And today I have in the studio uh, four people who are involved with a farm to cafeteria program which basically buys produce from in this case small farmers of color around Salinas and Watsonville uh, to be made into salads in high schools in Watsonville. My guests are, and I'm going to read this just so I get it all right, uh, Mark Mendoza Luangas Luangas, and Julio Gonzalez from Pajaro Valley High School. Did I get it wrong? Uh, no, you said Julio Gonzalez. That's okay, it. okay. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Alma Leonor Sanchez and Mireya Contre- Gomez Contreras, let me get it straight, uh, from Esperanza Community Farms. Um, and we were just talking about, about the, the fact that many of these farmers, these small farmers, know how to farm. That's what they learn at ALBA. Mm-hmm. But they don't really know how to run a farm. And there's precious little assistance that's available. And one of the observations I've made is that a, a lot of uh, college-educated uh, farmers-to-be mm. learn an awful lot of this stuff in college. You know, they learn all of the science and the biology. They learn how to do IT, right, which is, a, which is big stuff right now. Uh, they may have uh, access to capital to start up their farms, family access, uh, and they know how to deal with bureaucracies. And that's one of the, the stiffest things that farmers have to do, like if they want to be certified organic, right? They have to get organic certification, and there are all kinds of food safety regulations. It's, it's, a, it's a regulatory nightmare, so it's a lot easier just to sell to the distributor and you know, not have to deal with all of those other kinds of things. So can you tell us a little bit more about how you're helping the farmers? Yeah, the mm, the Seven Plus Organics Co-op has been meeting. Um, they started out meeting monthly, but for the last almost full year, they've been meeting on a weekly basis. And now their their meeting agendas are quite different. You know, their and uh, the their bi- the their bylaws have been on their agenda now for some months, uh, and so they're they're on the tail end of um, completing their bylaws for um, to kind of finalize the the formation of their ag co-op 
one of the things we've we've helped them do is find a lawyer that can help them with that process, which is a difficult one. Um, we've I didn't we we've done some research to help them find uh, funding opportunities and ha- have helped them write some grants that have that have come in uh, that are al- actually. Uh, I know that one of the farmers in the co-op received a, a state grant, and that state grant he used to um, strengthen the farm to cafeteria program. Um, there, you know, there's so many things to navigate. I know that their ultimate kind of wish and goal is to farm all together on 100 acres. Now. Our relationship with the land trust, you know, Esperanza's relationship with the land trust of Santa Cruz County makes it possible for us to have conversations about what it might take to, you know, in three to five years, find the capital and also uh, the land. Um, I should say that one of the more uh, the, the more recent accomplishments that we're celebrating is that uh, there's a foundation out of the um, s- uh, southwest Potlicker Foundation, uh, Potlicker Capital, I think they're called, and they are uh, visiting the Seven Plus Organics Co-op in the next month, uh, and they may potentially be recipients of one of 13 um, $250,000 grants in the country uh, that's geared at helping small farmers of color access land, per, you know, buy land or take a big step toward really cementing their business and, mm-hmm. and to, to generate profit. Um, so, you know, everything from navigating the bureaucracy to kind of the softer skills that you might imagine of just, um, putting a crop plan into practice, you know, and finding, finding the buyers. And once you have the the buyers, how to sustain that, how to be reliable, how to be, um, you know, how to communicate with buyers so that they, um, continue to buy your produce. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, it's it's been an incredibly eye-opening partnership between Esperanza and the and the farmers, the small farmers, um, and I'm I'm committed to getting them as close to this dream they have of the hundred acres. Yeah. Well, maybe make it more. Maybe more. Yes, more. Ronnie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, it also sounds to me like you should be uh, the the students should be learning how to to write grants and mm-hmm. help the farmers, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the main that's one of the main issues, right? Is the translation mm-hmm. um, from you know and and the legalese. Mm-hmm. W- what else are you doing with this program? I know that there's some other initiatives mm-hmm. to it. Yeah. So. Um, I think the the internships that we offer, we have had the chance to really dive deeper in into what we want students to engage in and what kind of activities we want to offer with the internship. Um, and so this year, um, we have seven interns versus um, in previous years, we've had two to three, um, where we're now coordinating field trips so that they themselves can um, get to personally meet a lot of the organic farmers in the co-op that farm in the area. Um, We have them present at city council meetings and school board meetings um, so that they can kind of share with the wider community about um, the food supply chain and specifically how it's working at their school and how this program has been implemented. Um, and also I feel like with the, with the internship, a lot of what I personally find is really important is the fact that we're providing just, um, a safe space outdoors where students can engage in like very important conversations about, um, their schools and their, Mm -hmm. you know, the cultures in their community. Um, I think that a lot of students specifically in in this age group of high school high school students a lot of times they don't get opportunities to explore outdoor areas specifically when it's around like stewardship or you know may, like working with the land and reciprocal relationship with the land and being able to welcome them to a community farm that um 
has regenerative and sustainable growing practices is is something really important i i feel like for this community specifically because i mean i grew up in watsonville as well and a lot of my family and the families that live in this area have worked in the agricultural like industry um but i'm noticing that less and less of our youth are like aware of um like the food supply chain and how we as individuals are involved in it and um so the internship is kind of just an opportunity where we can also just share about our personal stories and family history with growing food and how we can reconnect to that and you know engage our our parents also in in growing food and in eating healthy um and it's been really nice to hear you know students personal stories about like no, I, I've never grown food before, but my mom has. And kind of exploring that, like, where where can we grow as a community, not just as individuals, but, you know. Do you, yeah. what, what are your stories? Do you have stories, uh, um, Mark well, and Julio? Yeah, um, for, like, like Alma said, we're trying to build community as well with all these programs. Um, my mom's a farmer. She, uh, she's been farming for, since she's gone, she's been, like, for 15 years, and, like, I never, I, like, always admire her work, because she works, and then she goes home, and then she's, like, she makes time for us, which is, like, really amazing, and, like, it just, being, being, I wanted to learn more, so I came into the internship, and, like, I heard other people's stories, and it's really amazing, like, we're trying to build community, like, we're making salads for the schools, and we're, like, we're uh, giving out these salads, we're making community, we're like, oh, did you like the salad? And we're just building community because that's something mm-hmm. important in the internship community. Like, we're all gonna be in the same town for like a long time, maybe. Like, a lot of people are gonna stay here and like, it's important to build community with other schools and other people and other farmers. So that's like very important to me, building community. Did you want, do you have something? <coughs> Uh, yeah, my I know my grandpa works uh, in the fields picking crops, and um, it makes me appreciate more the, the the food that we get, like the the produce. And I know like a lot of my friends' families also have parents that work out there, and it's it's hard work. It's work that people don't pay much mind to or aren't mindful enough when receiving their produce and I just think that more youth should be aware of the work that goes into all of the crops that they eat Mm -hmm. and they should just be more appreciative of it. Mark have you ever worked on your your mother's farm? Um, I tried once Uh, she took me over the summer to like pick strawberries that failed completely (laughs) and I just (laughs) stood there with my sister and we just stood there for like an hour just like we didn't touch anything because we didn't know but like how julio said people stereotypes farming as like a bad thing like it's like for for it's not for it's not a good job people stereotype it so not a lot of people pay attention to it which is like what we're trying to do is trying to change the community's view of farming like we're trying to tell them oh this is a good thing like all those stereotypes we're trying to get rid of the stereotypes Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. what what do the two of you want to are thinking about doing in the long term you know after after high school and college um i'm thinking about becoming a uh, actor or director film writer Mm, i'm like on and off between things but i enjoy like like psychology or maybe like creating a business to help people out like Mm. people like my mom like farmers i want to like help out people and like bring community Mm. Well, I think, you know, that you're working with Esperanza Farm, mm-hmm. you know, s- <laughs> speaks volumes about mm-hmm. that. Um, what else should we talk about? What, tell, tell us a little bit about what, what is it that you're doing at the farm right, you know, these days? Oh, you know what? Yeah, there's two things. Well, when it, in response to your question now, I'll say that at Esperanza Community Farms, f- f- since we started, you know, since the farm was founded, we, we've tended to start planting in March as early in, in March as possible. The last two years, we've not been able to. Guess why? The, w- the floods. Blood. The floods and the, yeah, and the yeah. rains. 
And that has put us back two months in terms of the beginning of our CSA program. Mm -hmm. Luckily, inter interdependence in action, we have been able to work with the co-op to make sure that we don't delay the, the start of our CSA season. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been an important kind of acknowledgement and recognition that uh, building community, this is one way, right, that it can look is um, kind of breaking down the silos and the barriers that keep us disconnected, looking toward each other to see how we can help each other out. Um, the other thing I wanted to, anyway, would well, actually to finish that. So we're, we're just going to start planting this week. Uh, we do need volunteers for the program. So if anyone out there is listening and you'd like to come out and help us harvest once a week or twice a week on a monthly basis, weekly basis, Please reach out. You're just starting to plant, though. So when will you be harvesting? We will start harvesting probably in six weeks is when we'll have our first. Uh, we uh, we start with lettuce and onions and um, some of the green, the leafy greens. So six mm -hmm. to eight weeks, we should we should begin mm -hmm. to see our new mm -hmm. our first crop. Um, the second thing is, um, you know, there is a lot of momentum being built ar around food, farming, policy, um, and nutrition. And um, I just want to recognize the other organizations that have been doing this work or similar work. Um, I know Food What has been an incredible uh, youth-serving organization that teaches students um, how to farm, how to take care of our bodies, um, and a lot of and life skills. Um, obviously, the the the, uh, the food bank has been around um, delivering produce to people. And I know that while their lines are growing, um, they they're they're there. You know, they're, they're consistent and they're all over across the county. Um, there's Life Lab in the schools system. There's um, there's another organization that Sandra leads. Do you remember that one? Uh, Cardenia Amor y Amistad, which is um, located in Watsonville. They kind of advocate and practice really um, just like a lot of wellness and nutrition. Mm -hmm. my, 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 my dream as the co-leader of Esperanza is that all of these food justice organizations, I'll call them food justice, but, you know, food farming um, organizations come together and uh, leverage each other, le le leverage the power and the resources that we have because... Um, as a systems changing organization, um, you know, in partnership with Food Bank, in partnership with Life Lab, in partnership with Lantris of Santa Cruz County, uh, Food What and others, there's just so much more that we can do to make sure that people um, have access. Um, that term food security is, um, you know, we ask our CSA members, are you food insecure? And they're like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And so while they don't know what that means, um, it, that term is used by uh, um, is used pretty widely in the in the health and medical community, and um, you know, that's something that we address as well. That people have culturally um, appropriate food, um, that that they have food close to home. They don't have to drive, you know, two two towns down. That they have uh, they afford it. And that they don't worry about not having food in the near future. And so, um, I I wish for that kind of convening to, to happen so that we can address both long and short term goals and also build a system that not only results in profit because we need it uh, especially for far small farms of color but that it results in the kind of dignity that we know um, we all deserve and and that's possible we're making it possible this is one at a small scale um, Th it, we're doing it, yeah, and uh, I think over time it'll grow. Well, believe it or not, we're almost out of time. Oh, I was going to say something. I just like oh. go ahead. <laughs> it's your you have the floor. I mean, uh, I'm just like happy that I'm in this internship because I've learned a lot about agriculture, and it's like really interesting, like to see like I'm like telling my other friends like you guys should try these salads, and they're like really and they're like and once they try them they're like oh this is really good and i'm like you guys should have tried them they're like well we don't really hear about these things i'm mm -hmm. like and so i'm like trying to advocate more no. did you want to did you have any final final remarks yeah i just think that more more young people should think about where their food came from and care more about what you put in your body not just hot cheetos mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh where where can our listeners uh let's see learn more and sign up to volunteer. 
What if you have to answer? Yeah. Um, at our website, Esperanza Community Farms, we've got um, information about CSA baskets. We've got a link for the 7 Plus Organics Co-op. And we also have information about our upcoming event, Dia de la Esperanza, which will be um, in Watsonville. And this is really just a celebration on June 16th, 2024. Um, and this is a celebration of organic farmers. Um you know, a, a place where the community can come together and learn about kind of this um, food supply chain that's been going on. Um, and then if you need a phone number to sign up for CSA or have any more questions, our number is 831-854-8667. Okay. Maria, did you want to add any, any, any final there are more and more CSA programs popping up. Look for one near you. I know the, the co-op has one. I definitely want to say sign up for a, a CSA program, whether it be through Esperanza, uh, the Homeless Garden Project, the, the co-op. Um, I think we all, we all have a role to play, right? And I hope that it, I know I'm inspired by the, the young people um, that have stepped up to participate in this program. And I look forward to your films. Thank you. <laughs> and I look forward to your psychology, however that shows up in the world, to transform the world. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, thanks to all of you, Mark, Julio, Alma, and Mireya, for being my guests on Sustainability Now. Thank you for having me. Thank you Thank for having you. us. Thank you. It was my yes, pleasure, yes. and um, I hope we can keep informed about what you've been doing. You've been listening to an interview about Pajaro Valley High Schools and Esperanza Farms Farm to Cafeteria Project, which actually includes more than just Pajaro Valley High School at this point. Uh, my guests were Maria Gomez Contreras and Alma Leonor Sanchez from Esperanza Community Farms in Watsonville, and Pajaro Valley High students Mark Mendoza Luengas and Julio Gonzalez. If you'd like to listen to previous shows, you can find them at ksquid.org, Sustainability Now, and Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Pocket Casts, among other podcast sites. So thanks for listening, and thanks to all the staff and volunteers who make KSquid your community radio station and keep it going. And so until next, every other Sunday, sustainability now. Thank you.